thunder. of Jesus. When you come to the revelation of Jesus, that is the end of discussion. He kept crying, show me your, your face. And God said, no, it's too early. Moses wanted the incarnation experience. God said, no. And, and you know, the King James says, when you see my face, you will die. That's not true. The original Hebrew says, when you see my face, you live. But it is not yet now. There is an appointed time for the incarnation. And when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son in our hearts, crying. Not Jehovah Jireh, not Jehovah Nisi, not El Shaddai, not El Elyon, crying. That's a cry of adoption. That's a cry of the Holy Ghost. That's a cry of the New Testament. Abba Father is bigger than all the titles put together. Abba Father is the revelation of the totality of his essence, his personality, his character, his very weight and splendor is all put in Abba. That's why Jesus, all the days Jesus walked on the earth, he never called the Father Jehovah. My Father, my Father, my Father. My Father. Thank you that you hear me all. Thank you, Father. Because as a cry of the New Testament, that's the revelation of the New Testament, the Father and his family. So beyond the signs 
signs and wonders. You've got to go beyond all of that. When you see Jesus, he's the container and the content of signs and wonders. So now you don't seek for signs and wonders. You produce them when you need them. Yeah, because the manufacturing plant is on your inside. I feel like I'm preaching here this morning. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just wanted to finish that point. I wanted to finish that point. Somebody shout, I hear you. All right, sit down. I'll finish the point. <laughs> Let me start my own. <laughs> God punish the devil. Oh my goodness. I want to appreciate Apostle Samuel Kosa. We celebrate you. Man. Pastor Ladi, good to have you and all the pastors and all the all the music ministers. You guys just, you know, you just thought this place this morning. I mean, that, that, that energy, man, there's um, God punish the devil. I've enjoyed myself. I want to appreciate all the protocol, the welfare, every one of you that has ministered to us. We truly honor all of you. Thank you. And tomorrow we're going to have a blast in this house. You don't want to miss tomorrow morning service or anything under the sun. Get more people here. Reach out to more people. Text them. Tell them. It's happening. We need to go to the Logic Church tomorrow morning. Sunday is the grand finale of this conference. And I also want to, you know, acknowledge a few of my pastors who've been here pastoring our churches in Lagos. Pastor Gospel is here with his wife. He coordinates all our churches in West Africa. Good to have both of you. Pastor Uma is also here. Pastors one of our churches in Lagos. Pastor Rose is also here, pastor one of our churches in Lagos. Uh, there are a number of them in here. I'm so glad to have all of you, the Power City people. We love you. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Yes, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. Brother Paul writes a letter to Timothy, a protege of his, and he says to Timothy, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Salvation is faith in Christ Jesus. And he says to Timothy, you've known the word Eoda. It means you have become acquainted with the Holy Scriptures. Now the word Holy Scriptures refers to Genesis to Malachi. So you've known Genesis to Malachi, which is the canon of scripture. And he says the message in Genesis to Malachi is able to make you wise unto salvation. Meaning there is salvation in Genesis to Malachi. Then he says Genesis to Malachi has a message in Christ through faith which is in Christ. So Genesis to Malachi reveals the in Christ realities that Jesus made a reality to us in the New Testament. Next, next verse, he says, uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, the breath of God, and is profitable, ophilibus, useful or advantageous, number one, for doctrine, the word didascalia, teaching or explanation. And then didascalia will bring you to the next word, which is reproof, the word evidence. Hebrews 11 verse 1, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence. The word evidence there is the word electros, it means uh, persuasion so the scriptures are for persuasion but they cannot persuade you until they are taught or explained they bring you to a place of persuasion now when you're persuaded then adjustment begins to happen correction which is the word ephenetosis correction that is the adjusting of your mind to unlearn and relearn where you make yourself flexible to the authority of the scriptures and by doing that it will bring you to the next profit which is instruction the greek word by the a which means it, it, spiritual growth to grow you up spiritually that is raising a child up by the way of the mouth, by their ear. Which means that the scriptures ultimately are supposed to bring you to a place of spiritual growth. And when you grow up spiritually, you do ministry. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. He that descended, ascended. And when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Why? For the perfecting, not for the entertaining. For the perfecting, the word perfect means to equip in view of the equipping of the saints, the equipping of the believer. Every child of God in church ought to be a minister of the gospel who is equipped to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Every child 
child of God. There's no believer in Christ that is a step child of God. Every believer is a child of God. God has no stepchildren. So every child of God must have access to the quality of equipping that enables him to do the work of the ministry. Because when every believer is involved in the work of the ministry, the body of Christ will be enriched. The body of Christ will be edified. The body of Christ will, you know, be built up. And that's why it's important to belong to a church like Logic, where you are taught, where you are equipped, where you are trained, where you are allowed to mature and do what God has called you to do under the leadership of the ministry. Can I have a good amen? amen. Now, Brother Paul, who wrote to Timothy earlier on, instructed Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. And he says to Timothy, study to show thyself approved. The word study is the Greek word spudazo. It means be diligent. Be diligent to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, is a Greek word ototomio. Ototomio means to excavate. Ototomio is not to innovate. It is to excavate, just like the miners excavate the ground to arrive at the resources that are buried underneath. In Bible teaching and Bible study, we do not innovate. We do not bring our nuances and thoughts into the scriptures. No, we excavate the scriptures and allow the scriptures bring out the treasures that are hidden them. That word is the word ototomio. It means to rightly divide, just like a medical doctor who is doing a surgery will require a lot of skill in pulling out what is wrong and leaving what is right. So a man of God must be skillful to be able to cut through the scriptures and bring out the rightly divided word. So he says to Timothy, you are able to rightly divide the word. Now there are three streams of Bible interpretation. The first stream is what we have in the Pentecostal charismatic circles, which is looking for scriptures to back up. Back up. You have a thought, you have an idea, then you look for scriptures to back up. That's an abuse of the scriptures. That is an insult to the intelligence of the scriptures. We don't use scriptures to back up because scriptures don't back up our ideologies. Scriptures don't back up our ideas. Scriptures have its own mind. It has its own ideology. The scripture has its own culture. So your job is to explore and arrive at the reasoning of the scriptures, letting the scriptures tell you what its thoughts are so you can align with the thoughts of the scriptures. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So the Pentecostals like to look for an idea and they look for scriptures and those scriptures are disjointed. You pluck them out. Now listen carefully. A scripture only has life within its context. Once you take a scripture out of its context, it's dead. It has no more life because the Bible is a contextual material. So in studying the Bible, you examine the pretext and the post-text to arrive at the context because without looking at the scriptures via that means you arrive at an abuse of the scriptures because the scriptures were written contextually just like what Dr. Phil did this morning went from chapter 12 chapter 13 chapter 14 and chapter 15 which is the crux the climax of the book of Corinthians look at where brother Paul started in chapter 3 he said and I could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal meaning everything he was talking about were in parables to communicate with babes that's right that's right so when you're looking at the book of Corinthians, you have to mind the audience that is being addressed. And that is why the figures of speech, Brother Paul kept using through the book of Corinthians, there were a lot of figures of speech because he was addressing babes in Christ. Am I communicating at all? So when you look at the whole context of the scriptures, you will arrive at the destination, what the scriptures seek to communicate. So in Bible teaching, we don't have an opinion that the scripture is backing. Then the second stream of interpretation is when you have a dream and a vision, then you look for scriptures to back the vision, to back 
back the dream or you have experiences you look for scriptures to back them so you use your experience to teach the bible you use your dreams to teach the bible that's an insult on the sensibilities of the scripture because the scriptures are not subject to visions and dreams and experiences the scriptures are superior to dreams and visions and experiences so when you have experiences and visions and dreams you bring them and look at what does the scripture say if it does not agree with your dreams and visions and experiences you trash them out i don't know if i'm talking to somebody here if you're catching my flow shout i hear you then the third stream is contextual bible teaching which is what we call exegesis we have exegesis and we have insegesis in CGCs is when you read your thoughts into the scriptures. Exegesis is when you allow the scriptures tell you what it is thinking. So you can align, casting down imaginations, bringing every thought under subjection to the obedience of Christ. If Christ said it, it must be final. Whatever I'm going through is not good enough to question what Christ has said. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. Somebody says, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. No, no, no. God said it, that settles it, I believe it. It's not because you believe it that it is settled. It is because it is settled, that's why you believe it. Forever, oh God, thy world is settled in heaven. I thought somebody would shout, yes. Yes. study are the things concerning himself if you're studying and you don't arrive at christ you are a joker there was a eunuch in the book of acts chapter chapter 8 the bible says he was coming from from jerusalem and he was reading the scriptures and the, the holy ghost said to philip join this chariot and philip came to the chariot and said to the man understandest thou what thou readest? How can you tell an intelligent man if he's understanding a document? Yeah, because the Bible is an it is an intelligent material, but has spiritual spiritual dimensions to it. Understandest thou what thou readest? The man said, "How can I?" except some man should guide me. So there are human guides in the school of understanding, and the Bible says Philip sat on the chariot. Beginning at where he, he read. He didn't leave where the man was reading. He stayed from that same verse. If you're very good with scripture, you can bring Christ out of any verse. Beginning at that same scripture. Look at it. Acts chapter 8 verse 31. Put it up for me. I want to point out something for you. Acts chapter 8 verse 31. And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Next verse. The place of the scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So open he not his mouth. Next verse. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Next verse. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee. Of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Next verse. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. Anytime you meet a man reading the Bible, don't change the chapter. Don't change the verse. Stay within that verse. Look at the pretext and the post-text. It will always be Christ. Same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. When the scriptures are rightly divided, the content and the context is always Christ. Mm -hmm. Anytime you interpret scripture and it doesn't arrive at Christ, anytime you interpret the scripture and you see yourself, you've not read it well. You've got to see Christ because he's a subject matter of the scripture. So when a pastor preaches the Bible and arrives at an experience, he's not teaching. All Bible study, all Bible teaching must arrive at Christ. He's the destination point of Bible study. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? 
So beginning at Moses and all the prophets. That was how Jesus taught when he rose from the dead. And all the apostles followed the pattern Jesus used. Look at John chapter 1 verse 45. John chapter 1 verse 45. Then Philip findeth Nathaniel and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So the writings of Moses and the writings of the prophets had a destination, Jesus of Nazareth. So if you preach Moses and you don't arrive at Jesus, you end up in a religion. Religion is not Christianity. Religion is man's pursuit to seek for God. Christianity is God has come to us. In Christianity, we don't go to God. In Christianity, we can't go to God. So God has come to us. Why? Relationship. He says, we have found him. We didn't come for it. We came for him. We didn't come to get stuff. We came to seek him. And we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth. Look at what John will say of Jesus. John chapter 7 verse 19. Please pay attention. John chapter 7 verse number 19. John the gospel. Did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keep the law. Why go ye about to kill? This is Jesus speaking. That the law didn't come from God. The law was Moses' orchestration. The law was from Moses. This is Jesus speaking. Is it not Moses that gave you the law? If I go against the law, it didn't come from me. It came from Moses. Oh, I feel like I'm teaching here. Yeah. I give you another witness. Acts 13, 38. Acts chapter 13, verse 38. I'm going somewhere with this. Just pay, pay attention. Acts 13, 38. Glory to God. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins is not a prayer, it's a preaching. We preach the forgiveness. You believe it, you are forgiven. We don't confess our sins in the New Testament. No, we don't confess our sins. We confess Christ. He is a sin bearer. Somebody say, when I do wrong, what do I do? Your confession is of zero value. It has no, it has no value before God. So don't waste it. If your confession could do it, Jesus will not die. You will have been confessing. That's what they did in the Old Testament. Every year they brought animals. Every year they brought animals. And watch, 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 watch. When they brought the animals, the, the, the high priest didn't examine the animal bringer. He examines the animal. And if the animal is okay, he tells the animal bringer to go. Oh yes, God doesn't examine you. He examines your animal. And the animal is worthy. Therefore, you're worthy before God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So Moses gave the law. And the law of Moses is a contradiction. Watch this. The forgiveness of sins. Verse 39. And all. Acts 13, 39. And all. Acts 13, 39. I want you to see that's what I'm waiting. And by him all that believe are justified from all things. From which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So there is no justification in the law of Moses. Am I still communicating at all? Look at another scripture. Acts chapter 15 verse number 5. Acts chapter 15 verse number 5. But there arose of certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of who? Moses. So Moses owns the law. So when we say Moses, we are not talking about a person. We are talking about Moses as a function. We are talking about Moses as a system. Forget the personality. Let's face the system. Am I communicating? Because the essence of this conference is to terminate Moses and terminate the prophets. Let Jesus alone be the standalone in this house, in your life, and all over the world. 
Am I communicating at all? So Moses is a system of belief. Moses is a system of operation. Moses is a system that defines for you how to relate with God based on performance. The Old Testament is not books. The New Testament is not books. The Old Testament is a relationship. The New Testament is a relationship. The Old Testament is a relationship with God that is predicated on performance. The New Testament is a relationship with God that is predicated on what Christ has done. Because in the Old Testament, you have New Testament. And in the New Testament, you have Old Testament. So how to know the difference is by using relationship as a yardstick to check whether it is Old Testament or New Testament. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Acts chapter 28 verse 23. Acts chapter 28 verse 23. Lots of scriptures good for your health. Acts 28, 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus. Concerning who? Jesus. But out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, just like logic conference is holding, from morning till evening. That's the way to study the Bible. There's no casual approach to Bible study. Jesus will spend three days with people that are not born again and teach them for three days. Paul will teach all day, all night. Somebody will die at midnight. He will raise him from the dead. Conference continues. There's an intensity you require to spiritual growth. There's an intensity of commitment to the word, an intensity of commitment to teaching you require to grow. Otherwise, you will be a shallow, shabby Christian. You have all the slogans, but you lack the substance. Because there's a dimension of study and thought that must be given to the word of God. You can't afford to just be nice about the scriptures. There's nothing nice about the scriptures. The scriptures are rugged. So you've got to allow the ruggedness of the scriptures because when the ruggedity of the scriptures enshrines on your inside, you become a good soldier. And as a good soldier of Jesus, you endure hardness. The word of God transforms you. It toughens you. It, 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 it produces in you the quality and the substance of your specimen. Makes you tough. Things don't move you. You move everything and you're still stuck. And that's why conferences like this, Bible studies in church, all the teaching meetings are for you. You don't miss any. It's like a, a, a school walk. You don't miss any course because all of it will add up together to produce the quality of person you are. You can't afford to play with Bible study. And uh, you know, you know, you, you don't you don't determine how long Bible study takes. When you go to school, you didn't tell the lecturer how long to lecture you. He lectured you as long as he thought was necessary for you to learn what you are being taught. As newborn babes desire. So you can grow in grace and grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. Did you observe that all the Bible studies were beginning from Moses? Beginning from Moses. Jesus, beginning from Moses. Paul, beginning from Moses. The apostles, beginning from Moses. That's the pattern of intensive and thorough Bible study. It always begins from Moses. Now, this is where I was heading to. John chapter 5, verse 45. John chapter 5 verse 45 do not think this is Jesus speaking do not think that I will accuse you to the father there is one that accuses you even Moses in whom you trust the accuser of the brethren is not Satan the accuser of the brethren is Moses. Because when Moses is read, there is a veil. It veils you from the realities in Christ. So Jesus said, do not think that I will accuse you. I do not accuse. But you trust in Moses 
and Moses is the one killing you. Moses is the one accusing you. Moses is the one condemning you. Moses is the one stripping you of your dignity. Moses is the one giving you identity crisis. Moses is the one producing cowardice in you. Moses is the one making you hide like Adam in Genesis. I'm not going to accuse you. But Moses will. So when Moses is read, he brings condemnation. The ministry of condemnation. The ministry of death. The ministry of condemnation. The ministry of death. The later that killed is Moses. And the Bible says that ministry of Moses had a glory. Yeah, so... It doesn't mean that when you see a Moses ministry, they won't have cars, they won't have money, they won't have crowd. They have crowd, they have cars, they have money, they have a glory, but the glory is transient. The glory has no legacy. Because they are not producing disciples. They are producing people who are seeking and aspiring to get somewhere. In the ministry of Moses is aspiration. You will make it. You will get there. 10 steps to 14 keys to. You are always there. If you dare not, you do not. Keep dreaming until you get at it. All of that is the ministry of Moses. In the ministry of Moses is always aiming for something. Always targeting to get somewhere. But then there is a spirit that gives it life. It is called the ministry of righteousness. Uh, I feel like I'm teaching now. It is called the ministry of the spirits. So there are two kinds of ministries. There is the ministry of the later. That is the ministry that says, uh, if you don't have a bottle of oil prayed for, and you carry it around when traveling, you are not secured in your journey. That is the ministry that says you need a handkerchief. Because when they pray over the handkerchief, it becomes a mantle. That is the ministry that needs additions. So a lot of believers cannot pray without a bottle of oil. They cannot pray without a handkerchief. They cannot pray without some stuff. And they tell them that the oil is the anointing of God in a bottle. How can God's anointing be in a bottle that has manufacturer date and expired expiry date? How can God's power be contained in, in a bottle? Ladies and gentlemen, the anointing is not in a bottle. The anointing is on your inside. Yeah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you move the anointing moves, you are the container of the anointing. You don't need a handkerchief for mantle. You are the mantle. You are the one carrying the spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Every child of God has access. The ministry of condemnation. The later that kill it. The ministry of 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 guilt. Moses the accuser. Moses the accuser. Somebody said to me, "What about James chapter five? James chapter five. Brother James says, "Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord." Who was James writing to? James chapter one verse one to the Jews scattered abroad. So it was not a letter to it was a letter to Jewish people. Why oil in James? Because Jewish people have a culture that when somebody is sick, the first thing you do is put oil on him. It's like first aid. That's why after it says anoint him with oil, then now say it's the prayer of faith that will heal the sick, not the oil. There's nothing in that oil. The power is in the prayer. And the Lord shall raise him up. And watch this, watch this. If he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven. So sin cannot block the healing power. Because he will heal him first before forgiving him. He will heal him first. So there are no steps to healing. There are no keys to healing. You just receive the healing. What's the guarantee? He died. He was buried on the third day. Look, look, look. Let me finish something again. Let me finish something. First Corinthians, come back to the letter again. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, Papa. First Corinthians.
Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 14. First Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith. So any message that is not the resurrection is a useless message. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's no message. Your preaching is vain, empty, useless, void. And the believers in that assembly have baseless faith. Yes. No power. Only a form of godliness. Look at verse 17. Verse 17. Same scripture. I heard the go. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your seat. The guarantee for freedom and the guarantee for righteousness, for the guarantee for everything that you are, is what Christ has done. Do not think that I will accuse you. Every time there is accusation, Moses is close to you. Every time you pray and you're not sure it is answered, Moses is close. Every time you have to sing praise worship for long to feel the anointing, Moses is close. Every time you have to fast and pray to get answers to prayer, Moses is close to you. And every time you pray, you're not sure God answers. You want one man of God to touch you. Moses is close to you. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you. Even Moses, in whom you trust. Okay, Gaga. Look at the next, the next one. John 5, 46. God punished the devil. Hey, hey. For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me. I am the essence of his writing. So, 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 of me so it appears Moses wrote two things there are two things contained in Moses accusation and Christ so now it's left for the pastor to divide take Moses out push Christ to the people but where the pastor doesn't know Christ, he serves all together and it produces death. The smoothie that is not rough. The smoothie that is not smooth, that is rough. DJs. Attachments. As though Christ is not enough. Had you believed Moses? If you really believe Moses, you have you will have believed me for he wrote of me. Let me shock you a bit. Do you know that the law of Moses did not start with Moses? It started with Abraham. In fact, it didn't start with Abraham, it started with Adam. From Adam to Cain and Abel, from Cain and Abel to Abraham, two sons. Two sons in the house of Abraham, one by the flesh, one the son of promise, law and grace. Yes. He that was born of the flesh persecuted him that was born of the spirit. Even so now it is. They are persecuting us. Uh, it is not strange. We are used to it. Yeah, that's the way it goes with the terrain. That those that are born of the flesh will persecute those that are born of the spirit. But he said, what sayeth it? Cast out the bond woman and her son. For it is written, the bond woman and her son shall not inherit with the son of promise. That's what we're doing. We're casting them out of the body of Christ. We're kicking them out. We're kicking them out. Because if you had believed Moses, you would have believed Jesus. For he wrote of him. So, two things. Moses wrote of Christ. And he wrote of the law. So, where did Moses write about Christ? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. 
The five books were books written by Moses because those were Moses' teaching ministry. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy was Moses' teaching ministry. All those books were Moses' communication to the children of Israel because Genesis is the promise of an Exodus. What God did in Exodus was promised in Genesis. So yesterday we started by saying he is the spirit that moved in the face of darkness. He is the light that came out of darkness. He is the seed. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. How is he a seed? What does a seed do? You put a seed to the ground, it dies, it germinates, it must produce it. It was a type and shadow that Christ will die and he will rise and must produce. And Jesus speaking said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But when it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Am I communicating at all? Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 I feel like I'm preaching now Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and the Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone this is not a marriage scripture that the man should be alone I will make him and help meet for him the wife is not the helper of the man the wife herself needs help Somebody who needs help cannot be the one helping. But the man and the wife needs help. So I will make him a help. That word help meets. Is the Greek word. I mean the Hebrew word Ezra. Ezra means someone who rescues you from danger. Don't leave a man. There are some scriptures we need tongues to open them up. I will make him a help. Meet for him. Observe that before talking about the help, he talked about the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in that speaking, he knew that man will reject the tree of life. So the next verse is I will make him a help. I won't abandon him to his stupid decision. Even in his stupid decision, I will step in as the Ezra, the helper. Okay, let me give you a corroboration. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. Ephesians chapter 5 verse number 30. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Ayata, am I talking to somebody here? Next verse, next verse. For this cause, now, now hold, 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 hold. Dr. Phil, when you say for this cause, it means there's something you said that is the cause for this. There is something you said that is the cause for this. So for this cause, because of this, shall a man live. That means a man will live father and mother having understood this. Having understood what? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh for this cause. Which cause? Next verse. Atoba. This is a great mystery. I'm not talking marriage, I'm not discussing marriage. What is the word mystery is the Greek word musterion. What is musterion? Something that requires explanation. This is a great mystery means this requires explanation. And the explanation is not going to be in the story I told. The story I told is a parable. I use a parable of marriage to communicate spiritual realities. So what I'm talking about is a great mystery. But... I speak concerning Christ and the church. Christ cleaves and never leaves. So when you see the way Christ cleaves and never leaves, mirror it when you get married. So when you marry, don't think divorce. Think living. 
because you are mirroring something you are looking at. What are you looking at? Christ and the church, no divorce. Eternal salvation. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. No tribulation, no hunger, no nakedness, no famine, no strife, nothing present, nothing futuristic, no sin, nothing, not even nakedness, not peril, no sorrow, shall be able to separate us from the love proton agape, proton agape. From the love of God. What is the love of God? Not that we first love God. But that he first. Loved us. Proton. So my loving God is in response to his love for me. So he opened my heart. He can't trust my love. Because my love has mood swings. So he opened my heart. And put his love in my heart. And he's using his love in my heart to love himself. Back. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. If I'm teaching good, shout a powerful amen. Everywhere we turn to in the scriptures is Christ. Everywhere. I mean, I can keep pushing it all over today. It's all Christ, 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 Christ. The manna is Christ. The manna is Christ. That's why when Jesus showed up, he said, Oh, Moses never gave you manna from heaven. You think because things were falling from the sky, it was from heaven? No. Moses never gave you manna from heaven. Somebody says, So what came from heaven? Nothing came from heaven. <laughs> so, question Why was the manna falling from the sky? Why the sky? Angelic atmosphere. <laughs> David puts it like this, men ate angels, angels food. food. So the manna was angels and Moses that, that, you know, sat above where man is, concocted it and dropped it on men, and men thought it was coming from heaven. So Jesus said, the bread of God is he that came down from heaven. He said, they ate the manna and died, but this is that bread that we eat and never die. I, I feel like I'm teaching good here. If it was from God, they wouldn't have died. Hey! If he was life. And, 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 and the life was the light, light of men. God is light. Yes. And in him is no darkness. Oh. Every good and perfect gift oh. coming from a God, from the Father of light, with whom there, there is no variableness, neither a shadow, shadow of turning. So the manna was a type of Christ. The water that came out of the rock was a type of Christ. Somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, why don't you do communion in your church? He said, the Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. And I asked him, remembrance, do you do memorial service for people that are alive? Do you do memorial service for people that are alive? You only do memorial service for the dead. But Jesus is alive. He doesn't need a memorial. He's our reality. He lives on your inside. Somebody shout yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Shoot it. You don't. Shoot it. I said, yes, I don't do what a baptism. He said, why? Well, I say swimming exercise. <laughs> he said, but they've been baptizing people before. 
you were born as it is, the, the age of your life doesn't make it the truth. <laughs> What did John the Baptist say? John the Baptist said in John chapter 1, I indeed baptize you with water, but the mightier than I is coming. The latchet of his shoe I cannot lose. He will not use water. He will baptize with the Holy Ghost. I was giving water baptism. Oh, 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 oh. Let's read it. John chapter 1 verse 29. Put it on the screen for me. John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Next verse. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Next verse. Pay attention. And I knew him not. I didn't know him. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, so that Israel can know him. Because of this. Therefore, I am come baptizing. So the purpose of water baptism was to reveal Christ. Identify. Identify. Recognize him. Observe. Next verse. And John bore record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove. That was a sign. And it abode on him. upon him. Now, John said, I must decrease. Why to increase? That he will increase. So if I am baptizing with water, he's mightier than I. He cannot be baptizing with water. My water baptism is to reveal him. And when he knelt down and the heaven opened and the voice came, John said, this is him. Because we were cousins, but I didn't know he was the one until that water baptism. Then he was pointed out to Israel and the water baptism expired. So now today, it's not John baptizing you. So you can't be using water. It's Jesus baptizing you. And he doesn't baptize with water, he baptizes with the spirit. So the day you got born again, you were baptized. See, your problem is English language. Your problem is English language. You, you, you are too British. The word baptize in the Bible doesn't mean water. It's the word baptizo. Baptizo means to be immersed. I can baptize you with dollars. I can baptize you with soup. I can baptize you with rice. So listen. When we say the baptism of John, there are two dimensions. There is the baptism of John called teaching. That's right. That's and then there is the baptism of John called water. water. So teaching is baptism. Yeah. As well, Dr. Phil and myself came over you this morning. We have baptized you. Yes. It's not water. There's a teaching called baptism. And there's water called baptism. And there is spirit called baptism. So when they say baptism, say which one? Don't answer in the audience. Say, which baptism are you talking about? Because we baptize in our church. <laughs> which one are you talking about? You say, water now. Ah, water. You swim in the pool now. You want to swim? <laughs> <laughs> we are baptized with a superior element. Yes, sir. It's called the Spirit. <laughs> and somebody says, so, so, how many baptisms do we have? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Put it down. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. Can we read like a mass choir? Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 5. One Lord. Which one do you want? Water or spirit? The born again man does not need elements. The born again man does not need shadows. The born again man has arrived at reality. There are no shadows in the New Testament. There are no shadows in the epistles. We have reality. That's why it's a ministry of revelation knowledge. And a man in the flesh can catch this. We compare spiritual with spiritual. The natural man cannot receive, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So that's why Brother Paul kept praying that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of his inheritance, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That you may know that you may arrive at epignosis 
if it loses accurate I'm precise exact knowledge. Not trial and error. Revealed knowledge inside out, not outside in. Mm. 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 And when a deliver is built on revelation knowledge, he doesn't take color from the environment. That's right. He superimposes color on the, the environment. environment. You reign in life. Yeah. And you only arrive at this when you see Jesus. Hallelujah. When your eyes are opened to see Jesus from Moses. Moses will always accuse you. They brought a woman caught in the very act of adultery as I begin to round up. And they said to Jesus, Moses in the Lord's hand, stun her. Grace. What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> and they know Jesus said, I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill the law. So they trapped him. Because if he says, stone her, he has defeated his mission. That's right. He came to save sinners. So he can't stone her. Mm. And if he says, ignore Moses, he has defeated his mission. Because he came to fulfill the law. So you know what Jesus did? He went back to their law. For by the law shall no man be justified. You break one, you break all. Watch what he said. Any of you that is without sin. He didn't say any of you that has not committed adultery. Because for them to have the boldness to bring her means in adultery they are okay. It is called selective morality. You know that's what happens in the church. Selective morality. When you are very good in an area, you, you, you project it. The area where you're not good, you hide it. And then you push the one where you're good in the eyes of people. Ah, but I feel like I'm teaching here. And he says, any of you that is without sin, cast the first stone. And as they were standing, they began to remember. They remember. Malice, ah. bitterness, ah. anger. Ah. Uh, one by one, they left. Jesus said, woman, where are thine accusers? accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, yeah, Lord. He said, neither do I. He didn't call her prostitute. She was caught in the very act of adultery. He gave her back her dignity. Woman, you are not a prostitute. You are a woman. You are a complete woman. You are a total woman in the very sense of it. God doesn't strip you of your dignity. He gives your dignity back to you. He told us the story of the prodigal son and his father. The father didn't wait for the son to come back. The father went out and met the boy outside the city so that nobody will see the nakedness of the boy. When you go to a church where they prophesy all your problems, you better run because they are trying to demoralize and disgrace you. God never disgraces. God covers. God protects. God defends. And God gives you back your dignity. You're a royal priesthood, chosen generation, peculiar people, called out of darkness into his marvelous light. The father met the boy outside the city, and, and the boy began to follow his plan. Father, father, I have sinned against heaven, and I've sinned against you. Before you could say, I'm no more worthy to be called your son, the father interrupted. My son! My son! My son! Stop it! Once a son, always a son. Uh -huh. No matter what happens, once a son, always a son. A son that was lost, he's back. Go and kill the fit, fatted calf. Get me the robe and the ring. Bring it here. The father dressed the boy. He never disgraced the boy. He never deshined the boy. He met the boy outside town, dressed up the boy, gave him a ring, gave him clothes, gave him shoes, and held the boy. Together they walked back to town. And when they got home, there was a party, man. There was a party, man. You wonder why we have party here all the time? We have this family. This is God's family. Party after party. God punish the devil. I feel like I'm preaching. When you throw the first party and they have that look on their face, add another party, man. When they are here trying to recover, drop another one. Make it two parties in one. God punish the devil. Somebody shout, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I'm loved by my father. I am loved by my father. Watch this as I close this service. The elder brother heard the elder music brother. and he called one of the sons and said, come, 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 one of the servants, not even brother. his own. Can you imagine mentality? He's been in that house with servants. He doesn't even have one that is attached to him. <laughs> elder brother, elder he's been brother. a Christian since 1972. Elder brother. 
elder brother when they see you getting too excited about the word of God, they tell you slow down. Slow down. Amen. Take it easy. Amen. You have to balance this. Thing. Anytime you hear them say balance it, they are saying add law to it. <laughs> add Moses to it. You know why it's the truth? Because it is balanced. You can't balance the truth. The truth is already balanced in itself. And somebody said to me, Dr. Damira, why we don't like your ministry? Because you're too absolute. I said, yeah, because the gospel has absolutes. I asked him, did Jesus die? He said, yes. I said, what's that? He said, absolute. Was he buried? He said, yes. What's that? Absolute. Did he rise from the dead? Yes. What is that? Absolute. If a man believes, is he born again? He said, yes. What is that? Absolute. So the gospel is a gospel of absolutes. Yes. That's right. That's right. No middle ground. You either with Christ or with Moses. No mixture. No DJs. No, no smoothies. Rough smoothies. Because the blender has a problem. <laughs> so the smoothie is not coming out well. <laughs> Woo! Somebody shout glory! Stand on your feet, shout glory, 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 glory! 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 Amen! Watch, 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 watch. The elder brother said, what sound am I hearing in the house? And the servant said, bros. <laughs> the guy that knows how to enjoy is back. Since he left, there's been no party. Man, I'll see you in a bit. Let me join the party right now. <laughs> and the Bible says the elder brother came to the father and said to the father, Lo, these years have I served you. You've never killed for me a kid. But this your son, he didn't call him my brother. This your son, who went and wasted your money with harlots. Who talked about harlots? Accuser of the brethren. That's Moses coming out of his mouth. And the father said, boy, all these things were yours. But you didn't want them. The guy that knows how to use them is back home. Let the party go on. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a party in your life. Don't let the devil stop your party. Don't let hell stop your party. Don't let Moses stop your party. Raise the volume. Don't drop the mic. Raise the volume. Make some noise. Celebrate some celebration. Dance some dance. Jump some dance. Run some rock. Celebrate some celebration. Oh, somebody shout it. Yes. And they that receive the abundance of grace. And the, the gift of righteousness. Who is reigning here today? I'm reigning. Father, thank you for grace. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the deposit of your word. Thank you for unction in this house. Thank you for revelation that increases from this platform to the whole of Lagos State, to the world. I decree and I declare that from this pulpit, gifts are raised. Believers are equipped. Amen. Disciples are raised. Amen. Ministers of the gospel are unleashed. Amen. From this pulpit, I decree and I declare Amen. that the word of the Lord goes forth continually without compromise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Flo, come. Where's the first lady? Come, let's pray for you. <laughs> Jesus, boldness to declare the word. You speak the word with power. Men are raised, women are raised, boys and girls are raised through your ministry. Men are brought to the light through your ministry. The kingdom advances. Men of your generation look up to you. Strengthen with might. Strengthen with might. 
comforted by the Holy Ghost, fulfill your ministry. Great grace is upon you. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. Sufficiency in all things. You have sufficiency in all things. Sufficiency of resources. Sufficiency of men. Sufficiency of women. God gives you more men. More women that will stand with you. And I declare and I declare. You lack nothing. You are kept by the power of God. The word of God has free course. And is glorified. Through you I declare and I declare. That the body of Christ is made better for it. Great grace is upon you. Great grace is upon you. And as many as stand with you, they are covered and kept. The wicked one cannot touch them. All those that God has given to you as a ministry, all those that partner with you, all those that give to you, their businesses and career, blessed and flourishes. Only increase, no diminishing. So that this gospel continues to thrive in the nations of the earth. And I prophesy over this community. So mightily grows the world. And prevails. Father, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name. And can I have a powerful amen? Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me, everybody. If you are supporting this man and woman of God don't stop that's right don't stop stay with it and if you're a member of this church are still doing like this One leg. jump in the floor Come on. two years from now be 40 years preaching not born again mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about I don't go to every church. Just like every church doesn't want me. That's right. <laughs> and I'm aware of it. And it means nothing to me. Because I have my own church. And they love me. Yes, yeah. So I'm fine. We love you. We love you, Baba. We love you, guys. We love you, Baba. We love you, Baba. I have you, guys. I have you, guys. Pastor Flourish told me, Pastor's calling, why are you hosting Dr. Damina? Why are you hosting Dr. Damina? Dr. Damina is going to close your church. He is going to confuse your church. You know what? They have something to hide. He has nothing to hide. Only pastors who have nothing to hide will bring me. Only pastors who have nothing to hide. You stay in this church and get more people in here. You know them, your friends in this area of Lagos that are not sure where to go to church. Tell them, let me guarantee you, be in my church for three months. If your life does not change, I'll refund all your transport. Hey. And you can go. I'll refund everything you've invested. I know, I know he takes his work serious. He takes study serious. He calls me. We talk. We talk doctrine. We talk doctrine many times. I know he studies for hours. We discuss doctrine. Hey. Yeah, we do. Calls me, Dr. Damina. What about this? And then we start talking. He will say, I will say, we will fellowship in the world. That's where our fellowship ought to be. So you can be sure you stay here. Bring your family in here. Bring your children and bring your money in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring your money in here. Wise investment. Lay out for yourself treasures in heaven where thieves cannot break through. Put your treasures there. Where your treasure is, your heart is. If your money is here, your heart is here. Don't tell me, Pastor, I'll take a bullet for you. Don't take a bullet for me. Just bring the money. We know what to do with it. <laughs> Jesus already took all the bullets. You support this vision. Be in this house. Get more people in. And as you're being discipled and you're growing, get out and get people in. Don't be passive about what you have. The world, they are fanatical about what they have. We ought to be fanatical about what we have. Look at their music. They slam it without permission. And they force it down your throat. They are proud of that trash they push out. And we've got something they need. And we've got to push it out radically. Say, I hear you. I hear you, Papa. Support them. 
support them. In a short while, this place is not going to be enough for you. Amen. Let me tell you something. You guys need to come together, a few of you that have money, without him knowing. It is the source of the prophet that had a conference in the Bible yes. and said the place where we dwell is too narrow. Let us go and extend it. After they have put their resources together, they came to the prophet and said, we just need your prophetic covering. We've already made resources to enlarge the place. And the prophet went with them. And as they were cutting down the sticks, the axe fell in. And they said, alas, master, we borrowed him to do this work. And the prophet commanded the, the iron and he started swimming because of the grace upon his life. But they made all the resources available. Children of the kingdom take the father's business serious. It's a sign of honor and a mark of responsibility for the one who loved your soul. We don't give to get, we give because we got. He gave us all minus nothing. I know you'll give us. And I know you'll give us. And you will keep giving. And you will give and they will think something is wrong with your head. Just like when Jesus died for you, they thought something was wrong with his head. We give radically. We give extravagantly. Because the grace of God is extravagantly radical. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. Hallelujah. Let's support this vision. Let's stand with this house. Great things are going to explode in this house. Amen. I tell you, when I see a ministry that's going to explode, I can tell you. Yeah. Been around, I can tell you. And you'll be glad that you were part of those that made it happen. Yeah. When, when all the crowds come in and you say, yeah, we were there, we started this day. And we're making it happen, amen. I want to take up your offerings this morning. I'd like you to grab an offering. And I want us to give generously. I want us to give sacrificially. I want us to give joyfully. Your best. Grab your best. The banking details are on the screen. You want to write a check? Write it out in the name of the Lord in charge. The, 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 all the details are here on the screen.